velocity banking helps people get out of debt. In about five to seven years is like the standard um, number that most velocity banking experts, other YouTubers use. They use that number five to seven years. What I've said in the past is really at the end of the day, velocity banking helps you go about 50% or more faster than debt snowball. Because at the end of the day, the debt snowball concept or the debt avalanche concept or the minimalist approach or the frugal approach, whatever other financial concept that is out there that does not leverage debt to our advantage will pretty much go faster than them every single time because we're learning how to use debt to our advantage. So not only are we learning how to get out of bad debt, right? We're learning how to get out of bad debt, become free from the system, not, you know, uh, uh, chain bound by a particular way of doing things. So we get out of the bad debt by leveraging good debt, right? And, and I know you're going to constantly hear people say debt is debt. I understand that. That's what the Bible says too. Debt is debt. Right? The Bible doesn't really ever recommend um, people to go into debt. Now, God has authorized people to leverage debt. He has, author he has authorized that, and you can vividly read that through scriptures, through different stories. I know there was a time when God told, I think, a woman to go and borrow to get a particular task done. There's also that famous story that almost every preacher uses about the three uh, stewards or the three, there, there were, you know, the story of three men. One was given one talent, the other one was given two talents, and the other one was given five talents. Okay, from a logical perspective, what does it mean if I lend you something? It ain't yours, right? So God gave these three men one talent, two talents, five talents. So these three men are in what? Debt. God himself put those three in debt. He lend, lended those tools, those talents, and what did he say to go do with it? Right? Go. Multiply, work, manage the resources that you have been given. Now, to translate that, I guess, into the modern world, the 21st century of how money works currently, is you live in a debt-driven society. Whether you like it or not, you live in a debt-driven society where the, the actual dollar the money has no value, it's not tied to anything, no real tangible assets such as gold or silver, so there's no standard. The, the US dollar is the, is the world reserve currency for only God knows how much longer, okay? So once we understand that, if money has no value, therefore I really should not be concerning myself with, okay, I need to save this money because savers are losers in the particular economy that you're in and that is based on how you save. See if you if you just if this was, you know, cash right here in your hand, if you if you save it like the man with one talent by stuffing it in the dirt and not doing it and not doing anything with it, then you'll still have one talent in those times. But see it's even worse in today's time. If I stored money in the dirt in my backyard and I dig a hole and I put my money in there as my emergency fund, or I stuff it under my mattress, put it in a shoebox, put it in the bank, and I do nothing, no thing with the money, it's even worse because you actually won't end up with what you had when you put it in the dirt. See, when you go to take it out of the dirt and go and actually use it, the money is worth less than when you originally put it in the dirt. So let's say you put $1,000 in the dirt in the backyard, right? That's your emergency fund. 
thousand bucks. Woohoo, right? One year later, you gotta tap into that emergency fund, an emergency happening in your household. Guess what? That thousand dollars is now worth nine hundred and fifty dollars when you actually go to use it. In terms of your buying power, it's worth nine fifty, or maybe it's worth nine hundred, or once we get out of this crisis, it'll be worth even less. Okay, a lot less. So once you begin to realize that, then we get to define things. Where we say, okay, there is such a thing as bad debt. There is such a thing as good debt. Now, how do I leverage the money in this economy so that I can maximize my dollars through a crisis, out of a crisis, before a crisis, so that I can accelerate my debt payoff timeline? It has never, ever made sense to me to feel the pain of a particular thing just so that I can have a relation to it. Doesn't make sense. If I can avoid the pain, so to speak, let's say of paying off debt, if I can avoid that pain of paying off debt, high interest rates, I'm gonna avoid it. Kind of like when mom tells you when you were a little kid, hey, don't put your hand on the stove because it's hot. And then here you are, Curious George, puts your hand on the stove and you burn yourself. That could have been avoided. Now, I do understand that there are some pains, some obstacles in life that we must go through, that we must face, kind of like the pain of moving out of your parents' house. That's a challenge. That could also be painful, especially if you're a mama's boy like me, right? Um, but there are pains that can easily be avoided by which your parents or elderly have gone through which you can avoid because you can have the wisdom and the foresight to say, oh, my grandparents went through that. Let me not do that. Oh, my mom did that and failed. Hey, let me not do that. Let me just maybe improve on that. Get better at it. Okay. So that's all we're saying here on this channel is, hey, how can we avoid particular mistakes, particular traditional concepts that have become invalid or let's just say ineffective in a market that we're in today? Let's have a conversation about that. And then how do we move forward? Okay.